G'day viewers. If you're looking for a few simple ways to feed veggies to your fish, you've come to the right place. So stay tuned. GV Aquariums Australia. There are loads of reasons to feed veggies to our fish because most fish in the wild will eat some sort of plant matter. Even carnivore species will eat a little bit of algae or leaves or something in their natural environment. So if like me, your tank doesn't have any plant matter, your fish could develop some sort of deficiency over time. And veggies are not only good for their nutritional content, they can also help prevent constipation because they're all the fibre. And if you're like me viewers, you realise the older you get, the more important fibre does become. So even if you buy really good quality food for your fish, it's not really going to have the vegetable matter that they need. Especially if like me, if you have geophagus, severums that really, really love their veggies and they'll destroy any sort of plant you put in the tank. This dirty great monstrosity of a chocolate cichlid here who will eat just about anything. And if he eats too much meat, he will get constipated. Trust me, I've seen it. And of course, who could forget the alligators like these bristlenose catfish. And this gorgeous little butterfly pleco. And last but not least, our snails. So for these veggies are not just a tasty treat, they're something they really need as part of a well-balanced diet. But you might be saying, she'll be right mate, I feed algae wafers to my fish. But unfortunately, most algae wafers don't really contain that much algae. These ones for instance, spirulina minimum 10%. The rest of it's fish meal, soya bean meal and soya flour. And I've never seen a fish eat flour in the wild. So I'm about to show you a few of the different kinds of veggies and the few different ways I feed veggies to my fish. First off, we'll head out to the garden and we'll pick a nice fresh zucchini. So after giving it a quick rinse, we'll take it in the kitchen and chop him up. Now I'm not going to peel this zucchini and I'm not going to blanch it or anything like that. And you'll find out why in a moment. Now what I have here is a couple of little suction cup holders. One is for a heater I think and the other one is for the inlet for a canister filter. And we just push the zucchini onto those spikes like that. Pretty simple. Now because I haven't steam blanched or microwaved this zucchini it will want to float. So we're going to stick a fork into this piece here. Then it's just straight into the tank. And we just stick those on the side anywhere you like. And now because my tank is 28 inches tall, I just find it a lot easier to use this pickup tool. Save getting my elbows wet. So I'll grab hold of the fork and I'll put that down on the bottom. Now the reason I haven't peeled it or blanched it is because it'll last a lot longer in this tank because once these fish get stuck into it, it'll get destroyed fairly fast. And because the bristle nose I have in this tank absolutely love the skin, they'll eat that part first. Not all bristle nose will, but mine definitely do, so that's why I leave it like that. And as you can see, the severums just get stuck right into it. They love it. So if you're finding this video entertaining, educational or both, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. And if you like leaving likes, leave a like. This is Albie the Albino bristle nose, And you could see straight into that skin. He just loves it. They'll eat the skin before they eat the white part. That's why I don't peel it and I don't blanch it or anything like that. And this is Chill, our common bristle nose. And he has a face only a mother could love. Now if anyone thinks bristle noses don't get very big, the fork holding that zucchini measures in at 200 mil, 
which is about 8 inches for our friends in the land of the free, and chilies every bit as long as that fork, and then some. And this is our planted tank, and even though it contains lots of plants and dead and decaying plants, it contains a few snails as well. And as soon as you put a bit of zucchini in here, those snails come a running, or whatever the equivalent to running that snails do. <laughs> And as you can see viewers, that zucchini will not last very long in here at all. Now this is one half of a broken pair of aquascaping tweezers. I just bent that end over, slide a bit of zucchini on and hang it from the top. The snails come up and love it. And this is also a really good way to trap all those pond snails. So when that bit of zucchini is covered in the little pond snails, I'll just take it out and get rid of them. Keeps the numbers down a bit. Now if your fish are a little bit fussier and won't eat the hard skin, or you don't want to have to weigh your zucchini down with a fork, an easy way to get around that is just boil a bit of water. You can also zap it in the microwave if you like. So I just cut a nice thin slice and then drop it in that hot water and just leave it for a few minutes and once it gets all nice and soft and sinks to the bottom, you know it's ready to put in your tank. So once it's ready, we just fish it out and just drop into the tank. And it shouldn't really float away on us. Easy. I do that for this tank because these little butterfly plecos won't eat, really eat the raw stuff, but they'll hook into it once it's been blanched like this. Now if you don't want to have to go to all the fuss of Getting some zucchini and chopping it up, we'll head back out the veggie patch for veggie number two. And here I've grown some tin green beans. This is really easy, just get your tin, open it, and away you go. Pretty simple. You can give it a bit of a rinse if you like, because it will get a little bit messy, but I just throw them straight in. And have a look at these guys go absolutely nuts. Because they're pre-softened, they'll sink and it's easier for even the little fish to tear apart and grab a mouthful. Although, like I said, it can get a little bit messy, but that's why we have filters, isn't it? Now on to veggie number three, just good old frozen green veggies. So I normally just get the mix, but we have to pick the peas out because we'll do the peas a little bit differently and we'll get to that in a moment. So there I've just got the broccoli and the green beans. Normally you let them thaw out a bit and if you're in a hurry and forget to, they'll float just like that. But eventually they will sink and soften up. Now these beans and broccoli are so good, it'll even tempt the elusive Terry the Tiger Pleco out from hiding during the day to sniff some out. Can you see Terry? A piece of green bean fell down between those rocks and Terry was on it like a fat kid on a cupcake. Now it's back to our peas. Most fish can't really digest that outer shell, so we'll bring our boiling water back and we'll drop them in for a few minutes. And once they've softened up, we'll just fish them back out. And 
And now with our softened peas, it's just a matter of giving them a bit of a squeeze and peeling that outer layer off. Now this is really good for anyone who's ever had a constipated goldfish that starts swimming upside down and sideways. Just mush up a few peas like this and then feed it to them and it'll fix them up in a day or two. It's really, really good. Well viewers, that's how I feed veggies to my fish to keep them fighting fit and healthy. Other veggies you can feed are things like romaine lettuce or cos lettuce we call it in Australia. And we've even fed our bristle nose some mushrooms or zapped some butternut pumpkin in the microwave. And we fed that in overnight and the next morning there was all these tiny little orange pellets all over the substrate which did look pretty cool. So maybe comment down below if I've left anything out or if you had any other really good veggies you'd like to feed your fish, I'd love to hear from you. Well, that's it for this video viewers. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out one of these videos.